Today in our program, we will tell and show you the remote, mysterious terrains of Kurchum. The Kurchum region, situated in eastern Kazakhstan, is rich in historic monuments and beautiful wild landscapes that remain intact. Three hundred and thirty to three hundred and sixty million years ago, in the place of Buhtarma Lake, there used to be a bay of the Altai Sea, whose favorable environment made it possible for numerous kinds of invertebrates to multiply. In the local soil deposits, one can find the remains of brachiopod, gastropoda, or large prehistoric snails and slugs, trilobites, fossils of sea lilies, and corals. For millions of years, the remains of the sea flora and fauna were fossilized in the seabed, and when the sea dried up, the sediments were shaped by wind and rain, turning them to natural masterpieces. What used to be the seabed, under the conditions of a warm and humid climate, turned to arable lands favorable for abundant tropical vegetation. In the northeast Zaisan area, in the Kuchim region, is a unique natural monument of the prehistoric age, King Kuresh, which is translated from Kazakh as a proud, handsome man. At present, about the surface of a stone desert rises a fascinating rock massif. Clays of different coloration form an amazing kaleidoscope of bright colors. The bright colors and shapes of different colors prove that they were formed in the hot and humid climate of the Mesozoic era in the reign of dinosaurs. Today, Mount King Kuresh is officially recognized natural heritage. Its square is 300 hectares. It rises over a stone valley with rare white spots of saline lakes filled with salt and no water. The amazing kaleidoscope of clay colors and scents with imprints of ancient tropical flora in the light of the sunset is mesmerizing. Green-gray and green-brown shadows turn to light gray, pale yellow and white. And to the bottom they go green-gray, red-brown again and change to scarlet and coral. Sun, wind and rain have served as great sculptors that have been shaping these landscapes for ages to bring pleasure to our eyes. King Karish is a unique site that witnessed paleontological formations. At the base of the mount, one can find fossils that keep imprints of prehistoric plants. In the distant past, heat-loving plants such as palms, magnolias, arocoria, and ginkgo used to grow in abundance here. In the Kainazo era, they were replaced by temperate deciduous species like platanus, alder, karagach, chestnut, and oak. In the layers of the ground that belong to the Eocene, Bones of ancient vertebrates such as rhino, even toad species and species of grazing and browsing mammals, crocodiles, turtles, salamanders and other ancient dwellers of subtropical forests can be found. Kinkarishi is often called a town of spirits. 
Filmmakers often use its landscapes as a setting for their science fiction movies. And there is a good reason for that. At a distance, on the horizon, the site resembles silhouettes of buildings constructed by aliens. These are the effect of mirage. As one approaches the site, they find out it looks like a town that belongs to the ancient Greeks, with its fascinating castles, pagodas, yurts and towers. It is difficult to find King Karish without a guide, as the mount is situated in lowland. It creates an impression that it is based at the bottom of a crater. Probably this inspired science fiction writer Obruchev to come up with the hypothesis that planet Earth is inhabited inside, underground and is a hollow body. The plot of his sci-fi novel Plutonia is based on this idea add on quite realistic descriptions of flora and fauna that existed millions of years ago on this planet. For paleontologists, this place is sheer heaven. In order to name and tell you about the remains of all prehistoric vertebrate species found here, it will not be enough to devote the whole episode of the program. On the whole, the rock composition of King Karish includes five flora layers of sediments and four layers with the remains of vertebrate species that belong to the Eocene and Oligocene eras. In the density and diversity of continental deposits of the Paleogene era, there are no sites in the whole Asia and Europe that can be compared to Mount King Karish. In 30 kilometers from King Karish, on the shore of Lake Zaisan, another geological site is situated, Shekelmes. In the 19th century, this cape belonged to rich Russian merchant Shekelev, who supplied local fishermen with basic provisions and tools. The merchant passed away long ago, and only the name of the place reminds of his activity here. Peculiar caves and stone labyrinths of different colors have attracted people with their unique beauty from the time immemorial, when our ancestors could not read and write and probably spoke very basic language. In the Shekelmes terrain, fossils of early humans, the Java man, were found who probably had temporary shelter here. It seems these early humans chose Shekelmes not only because of its convenience, but also of its distinct beauty. Or perhaps they were attracted to the place because it had convenient caves and niches in the rocks suitable to hide from rain. Early people's life was hard. In those days, they had to survive hunting and fighting with large predators such as cave tigers, lions and bears. Our ancestors were easy prey for those animals and surviving was not easy. From the top of the hill there is a view to the lake. The landscape of the mount fires one's imagination. Sharp ridges resemble a dragon's teeth. Peaks, stalagmites, caves, dried saline puddles and springs, as well as meadow vegetation, add to the features to make them look like the mythical animal. Aged passed by and the Homo erectus were replaced by better organized tribes of humans of Bronze Age who were more capable of surviving and organizing their life than their descendants. In the Karajurga terrain on the shore of Bukhtarma Lake, one can see a gallery of sophisticated cave drawings by artists from the Stone Age on the rocks by the lake. The drawings show images of red deer, ibex, 
tiger, roe deer, and other animals. Usually they depict scenes of hunting and religious rituals. Scientists think that petroglyphs were made in the 2nd or 3rd century AD by the Andronova tribes. The Andronova culture were those legendary Aryan or the noble tribes. Part of them moved to India in the 2nd century AD. Some scientists relate the Andronova culture to the Arimaspi described by Herodotus who were early plowmen, cattlemen and blacksmiths. Achilles wrote about them the following Beware of the sinner's vultures with their sharp beaks and one-eyed hordes of the Arimaspi. Do not approach them. Father of ancient history Herodotus exaggerated the Altai's gifts and their abilities. He wrote that the Arimaspi did a lot of mining for gold in the mountains and the gold they had found was guarded by ferocious vultures. In fact, the Altai tribes had always been involved in mining for gold from the early history. This myth about large birds protecting their gold is probably related to the famous skiff's animalistic style in the jewelry the tribes made from gold. Gold jewelers presented mythical imaginary animals such as half snow leopard, half vulture. Such jewelry items are often found in their tombs dated back in the 1st century AD. Perhaps such jewelries found their way to Greece through trading routes enriching ancient Greek myths and knowledge of geography and history of those days. The Kurchim region is popular with those who are keen on historical and ecotourism. It borders Katon Karagai region in the north and the Coptic Pinsky region in the west. In the southwest it neighbors the Tarbagatai region and in the south the Zaisan region of eastern Kazakhstan. In the east the Xinjiang Uyghur autonomy, China. The climate here is sharply continental. In the winter temperatures fall to minus 50 degrees centigrade and summer temperatures are extreme too, up to almost plus 50. The distinct landscape features are valley and mountains covered with taiga. The place is inhabited by bears, elk, red deer, sable, eagles, snow leopard and ibex. In the Markakol lowlands with a lake that has the same name and that is surrounded by mountains of the Kuchim Ridge and the Azutai Ridge, there are virgin lands. There is Markakol Lake here, the largest mountain lake in the country. 